All right, now let's head to Townsville, where One Nation leader Pauline Hanson has arrived to kick off the first leg of the family law inquiry. This has been Pauline's crusade for years. The senator aims to tackle the issues in the family court system, one state and region at a time. Pauline, this is a people's inquiry. What's at the heart of this particular inquiry? Well, Peter, it's taken me three and a half years to actually get the inquiry, which I'm really pleased um, that it's now. The first date is tomorrow in Townsville for the people to actually have their say. And I do want it to be the people's inquiry. We've had a lot of inquiries in the past from the Australian Law Reform Council. We've had it from different organisations and different interest groups. But I think this is the first time really for the people to actually have their say. And in having read their submissions, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. People have denied the right to see their children, they, they're tired of the process, it's taking years to get decisions and the whole system is so bogged down. Even the judges are overloaded uh, with cases that takes them two, even sometimes even up to four years to hand down the decisions. Kids are denied the right to see the parents because of, you know, allegations made against the other parent. It is horrendous what is happening. So hopefully after this inquiry and we're taking it to the cities and the regional areas throughout the whole of the country and hopefully at the end of it we can find some recommendations along with other recommendations in the past to, to make an improvement in our system. Pauline, domestic violence has been in the news for obviously bad reasons in the last uh, few months but it's obviously a scourge on society. How much of the problems we have in this country with domestic violence will be a part of this particular inquiry? Well, I think it is going to have a part in, to play in this because a lot of the submissions are around domestic violence and it does play a big part in it by all means. But there's also, I'm reading submissions where false allegations have been made um, of domestic violence and so it enhances someone's um, ability to withhold the children from the other parent. Now this goes both ways. If you look at the government website, out of um, 284 cases, you know, it was 79% of the parents were involved in the murdering of those children. And, and this is on the government's wolf, um, website, um, Peter, that you've got 49% were committed by the women and 26% by the men, which is so wrong. So, you know, it's not one or the other should be blamed. What I'm saying is hopefully we can find the answers to stop this from happening and children are denied the right. Isn't this all about the rights of the child? And that's what I want to find the answers to it because we see so many breakups in families now that are breaking down. We've got, you know, youth suicide, we've got kids on drugs, we've got depression, we've got self-harm, all these things. We've got to look at why we this is happening and I want to get to the bottom of it and ask the tough questions and I will ask the tough questions and if they don't like what I've got to say well I really don't care because there's people out there who want the answers to it because what's happened has not helped our whole situation what's happening in this country. All right coronavirus Pauline I mean this stimulus package they're talking up to 10 billion dollars is that going to help? It depends on how they spend it, Peter, and I believe it should be put into infrastructure projects that is for the long-term vision of this country. If you put it in infrastructure projects, you're actually creating work. Those people are then paying their taxes. It's no good putting it into, you know, businesses that are struggling. Um, I know they're going to struggle but they can't pay you know uh, keeps Mrs going but if you've got people that are actually earning that money <clears throat> and those money in turn are being spent in the businesses you know it will help everyone but we need these projects I still say again look at the Bradfield scheme that needs to be built we need to look at projects that is going to give it, us a better power supply to keep these businesses industries manufacturing going I'd like to see the government get behind encouraging more Australians to start up industries and manufacturing instead of those migrants or those um, foreign investors coming out here, buying it up and um, not paying taxes in this country. So the government has a big opportunity now to get behind those ones who want to start up industries manufacturing, help state governments raise the threshold for payroll tax so they're not paying payroll tax and they'll put on more people to work. 
Pauline, you mentioned uh, energy. Uh, now, we saw Anthony Albanese come out last week and commit Labor to a zero emissions policy by 2050. We've seen the National Party say, look, you know, that's not going to work because it's going to throw miners out of work. And we've also seen a bit of a push from John Barillaro and, of course, Keith Pitt and others who are saying that we should explore the nuclear option. Do you have a view on nuclear energy? I've been talking about for years, of course we've got a debate and we've got to talk about nuclear. It's been um, working in France and they supply power to, to England um, for many decades and it has worked. We've got Lucas Heights, that's nuclear research facility there. So we should be looking at nuclear, which is clean energy. We've got to look at a different um, source of energy. So whether it's coal-fired power stations for the dispatchable power, till we get to uh, look at some nuclear, look at your energy. I've got no problem with solar panels. I've got no problem with wind power. But it cannot drive the country. That's what they've got to understand. It can't drive and give us the power that we need. The escalating power prices is what's driving industries and manufacturing to go offshore to other countries to run their businesses and that in turn will will decimate the workforce in Australia so people you need to really think about having the debate on nuclear Pauline you also mentioned dams and you mentioned the Bradfield scheme which I noticed that Cl uh, uh, Deb Frecklington has embraced with gusto and she's rolling that out and will roll that out during the course of the upcoming <gasps> state election uh... campaign that's what, what right, <laughs> uh, in the upcoming state election. That's why she's doing it, have no <laughs> doubt. Mm. Well, absolutely. What are your thoughts on this uh, Paradise Dam scandal? It is an absolute scandal, and I went up there and I... Well, I went around there because at the base of it is you've got Biggenden, you've got Colston Lakes. Now, they were lacking water, a very rich, fertile farming area. Now, I spoke to Matisse Corman and the Prime Minister about running a pipe from Paradise Dam to Colston Lakes to water that area. Very rich in agriculture, brings a lot of money to the district. Well, the next thing is the government, the state government says they're going to lower the dam wall, lost 110,000 um, megalitres of, of water, just let it run out, and the government never did anything. They should have negotiated, the federal government should have negotiated it, because it would have cost about $240 million to fix that damn wall, and they actually cost them $240 million to reduce the damn wall. It was an absolute disgrace what's been allowed to happen. They should have put the piping in. All the government has done on my, um, my fighting for them and getting the farmers in the... In, with, you know, to get a meeting with Matisse Corman, it took them over 20 years to get that meeting, and because I arranged it, and all I've turned around is given them a hundred, another one and a half million towards a feasibility study. People are over the feasibility studies. Just make a decision, go in there, and get some work done. Pauline Hanson, thank you for joining us from Townsville. Of course, that family law inquiry kicks off tomorrow in the beautiful North Queensland capital. And of course, it then goes on to capital cities after that. Thanks, Pauline. Thanks, Peter. Bye.